what your life really means. You know, I want you to know, first of all, that everything in your life has already been seen by God. Every obstacle, every death, every time, every issue. <laughs> he, just, uh, he just is teaching you and leading you, guiding you. But one thing he won't do is forsake you. He actually has done everything you need already. I want to show you that because I want us, as we take communion, we understand what this salvation really means. I think it's a habit of our part to not quite know we think, oh, we, we say. But you know, that salvation is deeper than you think. And the reason you're here this morning is because you have a salvation that's not like a trickle but like a deep well. And I want you to know God wants you to stay deep in Him because His purpose and His will is being worked out in your life. Hallelujah. I wish I had mapped out my life any different. I heard the Simba saying, God kind of shake it up for you, straighten it out. And, uh, you know, He takes people out of our life like me, and then I go back and get it. But anyway. You just have to get struck, that's all. Anyway, let me uh, go on with this. <laughs> but anyway, all things work for good to them that love the Lord. Yes, yes. So I want you to start this year off not worrying. I mean, we got children, we got brothers, and we got sisters, and some of us got mothers and fathers, and some of us got great grandkids, and some of us got so much going on. I don't know about you, but we got so many things. For me, each one of you, and even those you don't see, we're praying for every day. But this I know, no matter what I run into ahead of me, no matter what obstacle I come across, God is with me. And God is with you. He saw it from the beginning. He knows what you're going to go through before you get there. And he already has a plan to move you through because he's looking for overcomers. And the reason we need faith, like we talked about last week, because it is the only way you're going to overcome the obstacles ahead is to keep believing in Jesus Christ. Don't you let nothing shake your faith in him. We once preached about unshakable faith. Today I want you to know I shall not be moved. Yes, hallelujah. Sometimes you're tired, sometimes you're confused, and sometimes you just don't know what, what's going on around you. But what I do know is that you just keep focusing on Jesus. Find a way to keep your faith strong. Get in that word. Put a tape on. Dance. Do whatever you can to keep that faith hot. Hallelujah. Ephesians is a letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesian church that you know we talked about a little bit last week. They forgot that first love. Don't you forget your first love. And I'm telling you, that's your salvation. You once believed the gospel. Y'all give me time today, please? Because you're the faithful ones who are here, and this message really did a lot for me. I want to share it like it is, okay? Ephesians 1, we're going to read a little bit first from verse 14. But I want to go back after that and just summarize for you after we read it. Paul, an apostle of Christ. Y'all see that? Mm-hmm. Jesus, by the will of God, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy, and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ, 
to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with his purpose of his will. I'm sorry, with, it, with the purpose of his will in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of, our, of your sake, salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seed, the pro promised Holy Spirit, who is, read with me, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Listen, this letter is to the saints. If you notice, it's the saints in Ephesus, but gee, the Lord gave that letter to Paul for all saints. You are saints in this room right now. I know that. I hope you know that about yourself. If you don't, you need to start just building yourself in church more and more. But Paul got this letter to the saints and he says, for the faithful in Christ Jesus. For the faithful in Christ Jesus. This letter is not to anybody. You might want to share it with a friend who don't know Christ, but this letter is not to them. This is to the faithful. Yeah. Say, I am the faithful. I am faithful. This letter is for me. Hallelujah. I want you to see that Paul says grace and peace to you, not from him, but from God, the Father and Lord, Jesus Christ. He said grace and peace to his faithful ones from the Lord himself. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he says this, praise to God our Father who has, what has he done for you? He's blessed us in the heavenly realms yes. with, it, say, every, every. Spiritual, spiritual blessing. Yes. Can you receive that? Yes. We've got to drill this into us. We read this scripture a lot, but I, I want you to drill it into your heart. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. You've been blessed in the heavenly realms. Yes. Satan can't look at you as he's flying through the air and say anything but they the blessed of God. Yes, hallelujah. And the scripture says he chose us in him before the creation of the world. Did you know you were chosen in him before things were even made? Satan is looking at you as the enemy because you were conceived by the Holy Ghost, just like Jesus. You were with the Lord from the very beginning before anything was made. That's how important you are. Hallelujah. Too bad we can't see ourselves like God sees us. I've been trying to see myself the way God sees me. Oh, God, amen. You talk about hard, <laughs> but I'm trying. But I want you to know he chose you. Do you know the gospel of Jesus Christ? Have you received the gospel of Jesus Christ? This letter is to you. You have been chosen in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In his sight, holy and blameless. I don't care who's accusing you this morning or who don't like you. You're holy and blameless in his sight because he knew who were his before he even made the world. He knew your sins. He knew your mistakes. He knew your pitfalls, your lie, your cheating, everything you could have done. But you've been blameless by faith in his sight. He see the end of you. Yes. And he says, not only were you chosen before creation, but he predestined you to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. So you're the children of God through Jesus Christ, his son. Now, if you don't start seeing yourself the way this letter is written to you, we're going to be in deep trouble. We're going to help each other to see ourselves the way God sees us. Because yes. that's all Satan wants to do is to make you think you're something different than what God says. Mm -hmm. But from the beginning, you've been predestined before creation. 
to be sons and daughters of the living God, blameless, holy before him. So whatever way on your journey, you fall into a pit. You did this wrong. Oh God, I get, let me tell you, I, I, nobody get blamed quicker than a preacher. I can't slip a little bit. That's right, just a little bit. Somebody got something to say. My brother is the first one, and you call yourself a preacher. You ain't changed. How many people have come to you and said, you ain't changed? You better rebuke that in Jesus' name. Say, I've been predestined and chosen. I, the cha my change must be on its way yeah. because I've been predestined and chosen because I have the gospel of Jesus Christ in my heart. Yes. I'm adopted as a son through Jesus Christ, yes. as a daughter through Jesus Christ. I'm more than a conqueror. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, uh, he says, he told the praise and glorious grace which has freely given us to his praise and glorious grace that he freely given us. He has freely given us in the one he has given us. In other words, verse 6 says something to that effect. Y'all see that? Yes. In love he predestined you. You see, you're not predestined because you're special. It's because he loves you. You're in his love. Yes. How do you like to be in the Father's love? Some of us don't understand that because we really might not have had that kind of love from our father. Mm -hmm. I had it, but it's a rough love, but I had it. Yeah. Some of us never experienced it. But your heavenly father, you can depend on his love. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, listen to me. In him we have redemption through what? The blood for the forgiveness of sins. You've been redeemed. He didn't say you were perfect. You're being made perfect. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It's already been done. It's already been done. In Him we were chosen, having been predestined. How many times he has to say that? Verse 11 again. In Him you have been chosen. Y'all see that? Yeah. Having been predestined. Because you're predestined, you're chosen. Because you're chosen, you were predestined. Nothing can fascinate you with God more than seeing what God sees in you. And you were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth. How many of you heard the word of truth? You don't raise your hand and you don't have to come up here after church. I bet you raise it now. Yeah. You heard the gospel? You believe it? Yes. You heard the word of truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him. Say, I've been marked and seen. I've been marked and seen. Wow. So you think the devil can take your salvation? You've been marked and seen. He's going to try. But your faith is going to keep that seal on. Don't we see how that peeling that seal off? He's going to try. But you need uncheckable faith. Yes. You have a deposit. Say, I got a deposit. Yes. That's that seal. Guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. You belong to God. Yes. To the praise of his glory. Mm -hmm. Listen, today I want you to understand. God made everything from the beginning. You don't have to turn to these scriptures. But Genesis 2, 2 says, on the seventh day, he finished everything already. The work he said he has been doing, he has finished it. Say finished. Finished. Yes. On, on that seventh day, he rested from his work. Yes. See, so we're walking in what God has finished. Oh, You're living in what God has finished. Yeah. You're predestined in what God has finished. You've been chosen for what God has made. Yes. You're in it. Paul said, I live and move and have my being in him. Yes. Hebrews says, now, we who believe enter that rest. Yeah. You enter that rest, Hebrews 4, 3 says that. That same rest that God said he blessed when he made everything, you can rest. You need to rest and stop struggling and worrying. Mm -hmm. 
and trying to figure yourself out and trying to explain to other people who you are. Rest. Learn to rest in his rest. The Hebrew children in the wilderness never entered his rest because they couldn't just believe, just believe. Every day, I gotta just believe something for somebody or for myself or my family. I gotta rest in what I believe. Because if he says it, I believe it, and I'm gonna rest in it. Why should I keep worrying about something that's in God's control? Yeah. I've been chosen, said. I've been predestined. Say it's already been done. And say so you need to walk in that. You need to live in that. Hallelujah. Hey, look, you can turn, turn with me to a couple of scriptures before we close in a minute. Romans 8. Ah. Listen, I really want you to see, if you're just trying to figure yourself, trying to struggle, map it all out for you, you know, I ain't doing nothing today that I mapped out for my life. Nothing. Like she said, he shook it all up. I worked hard in school. I got out of school, got my little degree. I'd rather have worked at a plant because they paid more money. <laughs> all them years of working that, for that degree at LSU, all my friends at the plant made way more money than me when I graduated. <laughs> but the bad news for me is I couldn't do everything I set out to do. He shook up my life, threw my job, distinguished ratings, flat on the ground. Like it was nothing. 19 years. Highest rating, one of the highest ratings in the company. How could you lose your job? I don't know. I was saved, sanctified, my children were born. My wife and I were church members working hard. No job. But he had a plan. Yes. The job wasn't supposed to be that at that day and that time. He had something else for me to fulfill his purpose. Not mine. You said it when you were a kid, thy will be done. Did you mean that? I had to, had to take months to just submit to God's will. Months. Stop fighting and just rest. Just rest. Me and my family had to rest together. Look at your life. How many things you just mapped it all out? Don't worry. If you mapped it all out, that must have been in God's will because if you did it, I did it for 19 years, but that came a moment when something else got to be done because I have to be in His will. I'm predestined and chosen. So are each one of you. It ain't your will. It's the Father's will. Yes, yes. You've been chosen for his purpose before anything was even made. Yes. Predestined and chosen. Hallelujah. It's been already done. That's right. Yes. You get in trouble, you better start saying it's been already done. I must yes. be coming through this because he already knows it's coming. He already knows what I'm going through. He already knew about that death. He already knew about that, that loss of job. He already knew the struggle. He knew about Ida's damage. He knew that ahead of time. Yes. But it's an already done. Hallelujah. It's been done in you. Hallelujah. Listen, Hallelujah. you in Romans 8 yet? Yes. Verse 28, and if I don't read it quite right, that's because I'm not wearing my glasses. You just read it. <laughs> and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who what? Love, love, love him. him. Who have been called according to what? His purposes. For those God foreknew. Say foreknew. What the, that's a fancy word, huh? Foreknew. He been knowing you. You just not knowing yourself. But which God been knowing you? He knew me when I was a sinner. He knew me when I was a low down, no good, blank, 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 blank. You ever call me? He knew me then. He foreknew me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. 
He, he also knew. He also predestined, you see that? Yes. To be conformed to the likeness of his son. Y'all see that? Yes. That he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Yes. And those he predestined, read it with me. He also called. Those he called, he also what? Justified. Why? Those he justified, he also glorified. Have you been justified? You've been also glorified. Why do you worry about the rapture? You've been glorified. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why do you worry about it? Don't worry about it. You're going to be okay. As you've been chosen and predestined for his purposes. Yeah. Yield to God's purpose. Yield to his purpose. Stop trying to make your own way. Let me tell you something. I guess I can identify with the young people because I was an old man still trying to make my own way. But when we're young, we think we can do it all, just like we want to do it. But we learn quickly, this ain't working too well. I need a help. I need something to go on in my life to make it more meaningful. I want to mean something. When I lay me down to sleep, I want to have met something. Have fulfilled something, accomplished something. Not a trophy, not a report card, but something for God, whom I'm going back to. I've got to deposit guaranteeing some things for me. You have to turn that to Revelation 13 8 says, The Lamb was slain from the creation of the world, and your name is in the book of life. In other words, the lamb had your name in mind when he died on that cross. Because he knows whose names are in the book. And whose name is not in the book, Revelation 13, 8, to tell you, they're not going to be, they just can forget it. God know who was his, remember, before the creation of the world. Yeah. Your name was already in the book. So don't think you earned anything, you deserve anything. You wonder why other people are not saved. That's just, you know, <laughs> it's been foreknown that you would be saved. Because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you know what? If you get, if you lean into your own understanding, this message may not have much meaning. But for those who believe, this message will open you up to rest and peace. And to let you know God is in charge of you. That you're going to fulfill every good purpose in you. He died for those names in that book. You, yeah. Could you go with me? And we're going to begin to tie this up. In John chapter 19. Listen mm -hmm. people. I want you to know. He justifies you in the blood of Jesus. He will glorify you. Yeah. He knows who you are from the creation. He chose you and predestined you for his purpose. Stop making your own way. Say, God, have thy will in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you're broken, like I was, after I worked so hard, you know how to just give up and say, let thy will be done, Lord, whatever you want to do with me. Whatever you want to do with me. Remember that song, I surrender all? Yeah. Whatever you want to do with me. You ever been to that corner mm -hmm. where you just tired of fussing, fighting, struggle? Mm -hmm. And you just say, whatever you want to do with me, mm -hmm. let that will be done. Mm -hmm. Let that will be done. Mm -hmm. In John verse, chapter 19, verse 28. <clears throat> Later, knowing that all was completed, say completed. Completed. Mm -hmm. And so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, what? I am thirsty. Again, I uh, mean, I'm sorry, a jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it and put it, the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it up to Jesus' lips. When he had received it, say when he had received it, when he had received it. the drink, mm -hmm. Jesus said, read it with it, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Listen, do you know what that word in the Greek really means? It is finished. 
If you ever owed a bill and you pay it every month, and you from well back in the day, I used to pay my mama's bills for write a little book up there, and they mark it as paid, and then they put the new balance. Then I go back the next time, I pay the bill, they mark it as paid, and they give me a lesser balance. And I keep doing that for God knows how long. Then finally it says, pay you. Yeah. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. To live is that word in the Greek. And it means pay in full. You owe nothing. Yes, Lord. Everything is by grace now. Yes, yes. Which has been paid in full for you. Let's get our hearts ready for communion. 